everybody. Welcome to Camp Kira. Do you remember my best mate, Alexis? <laughs> Good night, Payful. I love it out here in the Australian bush, but lately I've been missing some of the fun things like music festivals we would go to in the summer back home. Which is actually winter time here. We're in the Southern Hemisphere, so our seasons are the opposite of the US. But you can't tell because it's so warm. I have an idea. My mom's school puts on a winter concert every year. What if we did one now, outside for all of our animal friends? Too right, I'm in. We use radio music in the clinic to help some of our fosters relax and heal quicker. Then they'll love live music. Hmm, I don't think we have any instruments. <laughs> or know how to play them. I know, let's make our own. Ah, oh, ace idea. I want to do a drum kit. What about you, Kira? The xylophone. We played those in school. That should be easy enough, I think. Okay, we've got some materials to go find. For this part, you may need to ask an adult to help you. Did you know that no one really knows the xylophone's origins? I looked it up on the internet, and even though xylophone's origins are present in the traditional music of a lot of different cultures, its birthplace and date remain a mystery. Mystery is always fun if you ask me. I learned at school that they used to lay xylophone bars on top of straw, and we have plenty of that here. Just like in music, let the environment inspire you. Let's not skip a beat. It's time to make our drums. I learned in history class that drums are the oldest musical instruments. Indigenous Australians would make them out of wood from eucalyptus trees. As they say, one mate's trash is another mate's drum kit. Here in the bush, we always try to recycle as much as we can. Did you know that playing drums is really good for your heart and your brain? So shine bright, drummers. <laughs> These next steps might require a grown-up to help. Marsupials and tacky glossodays! Welcome to Alexis and Kira's first live musical performance! We need a band name! You're right, we do! How about the Outback Pack? Fonza, I love it! Let's get wild! One and a two and a... I reckon we're scaring the wombat! Whoopsie, we just lost most of our audience! Thankfully the koalas are too slow to leave! <laughs> <laughs> Practice makes perfect as they say! <laughs> At least we know how to keep any animal predators away. True. And we're having fun. Also true. This is the Outback Pack signing off from the bush. We will be back with more adventures in the wild. Hooray! Shall we give it another go? Maybe we should try a different key. Yeah, like which one? M? Uh, there is no M key, Alexis. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> This is the famous Alexis from Camp Kira. Kira's a bit tied up searching for supplies for our, uh, what exactly? Our 4th of July barbecue, or as you call it in Australia, Bobby. <laughs> that's right. I reckon that's a lot like our Australia Day, which is on January 26th. It's my last week at the Animal Sanctuary, which is kind of sad. So I wanted to do something special. 
I've learned so much about Australia, so I wanted to share more about our traditions in America with you and everyone here. So, of course I said, I'm in. Plus, my dad is heaps excited he gets to fire up the barbie. Ooh, look at these. Um, it's cups, Kira. Yes, but we can upcycle these cups to make the perfect 4th of July light garland. Just gonna have to trust you, mate. I just see cups. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the barbecue is about to begin. So come on, let's get started. For this part, you may need to ask an adult to help you. Kira, can you tell me more about how this holiday started? You bet! On July 4th, 1776, papers were published that officially declared the 13 original colonies independent from Great Britain. One year later, it was celebrated in Philadelphia with bells and fireworks. allowed in the bush because of fire safety, so I thought it'd be fun to make crackers instead. I've got a flair for saving the planet. <laughs> Get it? Alexis, do you know what ducks love about the 4th of July? What? Fire quackers! <laughs> wow, Kira! This looks so cool! Thanks! I couldn't have done it without you! <laughs> I'm going to really miss it here! I've had the best time! I'm going to miss you! Guess there's just one thing left to do! What's that? Oh! <laughs> you can't have a 4th of July without fireworks! <laughs> Fonza! <laughs> Even though I'm leaving Australia, there are still so many more adventures ahead! Till then, I'm Kira Bailey, signing off from the bush! Hi everyone! Welcome back to Camp Kira! It's Mother's Day here in Australia! And I just love being out here at my great aunt's wildlife sanctuary with my mom. I wanted to show her how much I appreciate her by making her breakfast in bed, or as the Aussies call it, brekkie in bed. <laughs> brekkie is usually made up of things like porridge, yogurt made out of coconuts, fresh fruits and veggies, and of course, toast. You can't forget the toast. My mom loves avocado on hers. And one last touch, the flowers. Chrysanthemums are traditional for Mother's Day in Australia. They symbolize a long life and love. Plus, they're called mums for short. Kind of perfect, don't you think? <laughs> Ta-da! Now it's time for the gift. I wanted to make my mom something inspired by all the strong animal moms we see every day. Alexis and I once had to take care of an orphaned wallaby. Wallabies are like kangaroos, but smaller. We made a pouch out of my old vest to keep it warm. So I decided to make for my mom a special pouch purse just for her. You can use any old tablecloth or fabric you already have. Just add lots and lots of rhinestones. Here's how I did it. There aren't many stores in the bush, so I'm going to use things we already have. Reusing materials is a great way to help save the environment. These next steps might require a grown-up to help. Did you know Joey's spend at least six months in their mom's pouches? That's a lot of love. <laughs> okay, this is my favorite part, the rhinestones. 
Go ahead and add your own personal touch. <laughs> Get it? It's so sparkly. My mom will love it. Okay, it's time to go surprise her. Ah, oh, Blossom, how did you get here? You want to say Happy Mother's Day to my mom too? Okay. Happy Mother's Day to all of the moms, animal and human. I will be back with more adventures in the wild later. Till then, signing off from the bush. <laughs> Hello, fellow adventurers. Welcome back to Camp Kira. I've been spending the summer at my great aunt Mamie's animal sanctuary, which my family has owned for many years. I remember visiting the sanctuary with my dad when I was little. Father's Day is coming up and it's a great holiday, but it's always a little hard for me. You see, my dad passed away a few years ago and I still miss him, but I love the memories that I have of him and being here at the sanctuary makes me feel so close to him. And I also met another great dad here, Alexis's dad, Mr. Curry. Thank you, Kira. My dad does maintenance and large animal handling here at the sanctuary. And he's been teaching us lots of interesting and fun things. So today, we decided to do something special. We are going to make Mod Podge photo art of our dads using the wood from the eucalyptus trees. I picked this one. We always loved exploring the outdoors together. Hmm, I can't decide which one to use. I have an idea. Make coasters. Your dad can use them at his famous Bobby's. <laughs> Fonza, that's brilliant. All right, let's Mod Podge. I read that eucalyptus trees are one of the strongest and fastest growing trees in the world. And they can live for over 250 years. Isn't that tremendous? <laughs> Mod Podge is so easy to use because it glues and seals at the same time. If only it did my homework too. Did you know not every country celebrates Father's Day on the same day? The US celebrates it the third Sunday of June. And as for us Aussies, it's the first Sunday in September. Now we have to wait 24 hours. Hmm, whatever shall we do? Ah, oh, Kira, your photo is aces. Your dad would be so proud. Thanks, yours too. What are the ways you like to celebrate your dad on Father's Day? Oh, um, I love having a good old meal together. Oh, speaking of, I smell Dad's got the Barbie fired up. I reckon I'll go give him these coasters now. You coming? Right behind you. Hope you had fun creating with me and Alexis today. I will be back with more arts and craft ideas and adventures in the wild. Till then, I'm Kira Bailey signing off from the bush. Happy Father's Day, Dad. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Camp Kira. Do you remember my best mate, Alexis? <laughs> G'day, people! I love it out here in the Australian bush, but lately I've been missing some of the fun things like music festivals we would go to in the summer back home. Which is actually winter time here. We're in the Southern Hemisphere, so our seasons are the opposite of the US. But you can't tell because it's so warm. I have an idea. My mom's school puts on a winter concert every year. What if we did one now, outside for all of our animal friends? Too right, I'm in. We use radio music in the clinic to help some of our fosters relax and heal quicker. Then they'll love live music. Hmm, I don't think we have any instruments. <laughs> or know how to play them. I know, let's make our own. Ah, oh, ace idea. I want to do a drum kit. What about you, Kira? The xylophone. We played those in school. That should be easy enough, I think. Okay, we've got some materials to go find. For this part, you may need to ask an adult to help you. Did you know?
know that no one really knows the xylophone's origins? I looked it up on the internet, and even though xylophone's origins are present in the traditional music of a lot of different cultures, its birthplace and date remain a mystery. Mystery is always fun if you ask me! I learned at school that they used to lay xylophone bars on top of straw, and we have plenty of that here. Just like in music, let the environment inspire you. Let's not skip a beat. It's time to make our drums. I learned in history class that drums are the oldest musical instruments. Indigenous Australians would make them out of wood from eucalyptus trees. As they say, one mate's trash is another mate's drum kit. Here in the bush, we always try to recycle as much as we can. Did you know that playing drums is really good for your heart and your brain? So shine bright, drummers! <laughs> These next steps might require a grown-up to help. Marsupials and tacky glossodays! Welcome to Alexis and Kira's first live musical performance! We need a band name! You're right, we do! How about the Outback Pack? Honza, I love it! Let's get wild! One and a two and a... I reckon we're scaring the wombat! Whoopsie, we just lost most of our audience! Thankfully the koalas are too slow to leave! <laughs> <laughs> Practice makes perfect as they say! <laughs> At least we know how to keep any animal predators away. True. And we're having fun. Also true. This is the Outback Pack signing off from the bush. We will be back with more adventures in the wild. Hooray! Shall we give it another go? Maybe we should try a different key. Yeah, like which one? M? Uh, there is no M key, Alexis. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> there. Perfect. Welcome back to Camp Kira. Alexis and I absolutely love living in the camp. We wanted to make it the best place to be this summer. So today, we're going glamping. Glamping is mixing glam with camping. We're making our tents extra glamorous with some garland using tree branches from the bush. We made them by tying eucalyptus leaves to light strands. The leaves are really strong and grow in pairs, like Alexis and I. Tree! <laughs> <laughs> Plus, they smell amazing. And I'm decorating the camp with these lanterns to create the atmosphere. Kira, what else do people do when glamping? Oh, you have to make sure you have yummy snacks and fun activities planned. One of my favorite things to do is braid hair. Me too. Have you ever had a fishtail braid? No. What is that? Well, it's a braid that uses two hair sections instead of three. And it looks like a mermaid tail. Oh, I'd love to give you one. That sounds so cool. Let's do it. I'll go get the brushes. Let's do it. Did you know braiding hair started over 5,000 years ago? It began in ancient Egypt. What a hair story. Over. Over. Now, let's glamp it up. Did you know eucalyptus flowers don't have any petals? There aren't many pollinating animals like bees in Australia, so the flowers have to pollinate themselves. Now this is a braid upgrade. And there. <laughs> Ta-da! OMG! The fishtail braid is my new favorite hairstyle. So glad you like it. Wow, mate, this glamping setup is so awesome. Three thinks so too. What are your favorite things to do while glamping? Thanks for joining us today, happy campers. I'll be back with more adventures in the wild. Till then. I'm Kira Bailey signing off from the bush. Bye-bye!
guys, I'm Chloe, and I'm gonna show you guys how to make something really cute out of upcycled cardboard tubes. So you may get a little dirty in this craft, so make sure you have your surface covered. Here's everything that you need. Some different sized cardboard tubes that you can find around the house, sticky dots, some paint, and some sponge brushes. Let's get started. Starting with the inside, paint the tube any color you want. When I'm painting things, I like to start with blue because it's my favorite color. And then you may want to do a couple coats. Paint the outside. You can use whatever tubes you have around the house. Potato chip tubes or toilet paper tubes. You may want to cut the tubes down just to make them a little smaller, but if they're a little hard, then you can just ask for help. You can paint the tubes whatever color you want. I'm doing green for plants, blue for the ocean, and purple for sunsets. Finished painting the tubes, now it's time for the AG DIY magic. Now that you have all the tubes painted, you kinda wanna play around with the shape that you like. So when you're placing them all together, I like to have two of the bigger ones on the bottom. It will like, be easier to stand up and it won't fall over. And then you're just gonna put your sticky dots on. What's great about this upcycle room decor is you can turn it into a shelf, or you can put it on a wall, or you can really do anything with it. So I think I got it. So you can see how the purple and the green are kind of the base and it can stand up more. So now that we're all done, I'm going to take out all the accessories and things I'm gonna put in here. First are these slippers, a bag, some sunglasses, a little foam, this ruler, this camera that takes a picture, there's some books, and then there's more stuff in this bag. It fits a lot of stuff. A bunch of plants that you can just find at your craft store. You can even find the plants from outside. You can put these plants in the shelves, on the shelves, or wherever you like them. I love this shelving unit. You can really put it anywhere in the room, and I love the little plants. They're adorable. Thanks for watching, and make sure you do something good for the planet. Bye.